Uh, if you've logged on to uh, Tuesday, log out and then password from Monday 14, you can get access into the Linux IP folder. probably start with a, a little bit of backstory as to what we're doing here at Burnside. Um, this year for our year 13 we used the Cisco uh, Discovery 1 uh, for our year 13 hardware class. Uh, it was taught over, uh, over one semester um, here in, in class uh, with, uh, with extra time to provide by students themselves out of class. Uh, and then we're 16 students, <coughs> students on the course. Um, as for next year, um, a good portion of that material has now made its way down to level two. So um, we're sort of a bit of a crossroads with what we're doing with level two. Uh, what Murray has suggested from his um, experience here. Uh, 
Is anyone else using Cisco in this room? Anyone else using Cisco at all? No, no. Okay, so that's uh, probably not going to uh, mean much to you. Um, okay, so no one else is. Okay, well, that's. Uh, so, so it's just R and me and Burnside Den, I guess, in uh, Christchurch that are, that are using the Cisco curriculum. So I won't bother. Sorry, can I just find it? How many of us are actually teaching in Christchurch schools at the moment? Anyone? Just two of you. So, so, I'm, so I'm, no new, I'm, I'm new to the infrastructure side of All right, so okay. Of so maybe we're I want to get an idea of where people are and what they're using as much as anything. Okay, so, so there's only two of us who are. Other okay. people who aren't using Cisco, what is everyone else using? I don't know what else is teaching it. No, else okay. Okay. okay, you're really a. Sorry? You're an early eh? No, I'm happy. I'm happy, right. Well, we, we probably just should tell our stories then. Um, you've already told the story to the little ones. I'll be able to what's going on. For sure, for sure. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll carry on with, with mine. Um, as I'd say, with the uh, 16 in the class uh, doing a hardware, um, hardware course only, uh, hardware and networking, and um, we use the Cisco curriculum. Um, we're at Cisco Academy uh, associated with CPIT, uh, who's our lead academy for Cisco here in Christchurch. Um, there's another academy in, um, uh, in Auckland, who is another lead academy for New Zealand, uh, two, two lead academies. Um, the Cisco curriculum, which I've given a link to, um, have a look at. And um, if you jump onto that, we are the infrastructure, uh, the VHS Cisco is there. We'll take you to our little local uh, uh, iMac, which is running as a web server with a copy of uh, the essentials, which is the level one. Um, pretty much the one is a little bit of crossover to level two. And this is our Discovery One course that, uh, that we use here for our U30s this year, um, which covers. It's going to come up and show you. It's way too small. You can have a look on your screen. It's probably a bit easier if you just have a look at that. Uh, I'll bring it back up. Um, this Cisco, Cisco course is provided worldwide uh, through the Cisco uh, Learning Academy and um, for specifically designed for uh, senior high school uh, or uh, early tertiary uh, students and uh, it's fully you know, self-paced for uh, chat tests and uh, final exams that are built in. And uh, our intention next year with the year 12s is to have this course run uh, in the students' own time. We're not going to run it in, in class as we have the year 12s this year. Uh, it's going to be available to all students, but of course only the ones who are dead keen on their uh, infrastructure and networking will complete the course because it, it, it's completely on them to, to provide the time to do it. So that's how it's happening at Burnside next year. Um, we haven't yet had our meeting which is coming out Wednesday to decide what assessments we'll be offering. But uh, if the uh, 2.50 and uh, 2.5 make it in, then um, they'll be like bolt-ons to the Year 12 um, program in uh, programming, programming infrastructure as a class that we're offering for all the classes that's offered Year 12. So it's a combination of uh, programming, which will be done uh, in class, and the infrastructure uh, bolt-on, which will be done in the students' own time. And they'll be using this program to, to run self paced in their own time with a little bit of in class support. Uh, and of course, the chapter testing uh, and all the assessment tasks are done in class because uh, they have to be uh, properly and completed in class. But are you assessing using Cisco's material or the new teachers? Um, well, that's, that's what we're designing for instead. Uh, but at the moment, we're intending to run it and have the assessments available for the students. Uh, they may have to be assessed outside of class time, but it will have to be written. Class uh, and monitor um, while it's happening, but um, so that so we'll do the Cisco uh, go through the Cisco assessments because at the end of that they get the Cisco certificate and show them how to see the progress. But as to whether we're assessing uh, against um, 2.5 or 2.51, it's yet to be decided. That's happening in for us. Um, What's your gap feeling? Well, you go with that 2% assessment. I am Cisco profession. I'm picking that <coughs> because it is just. Much time and as much material, and we'll, we'll probably offer uh, the ability for the students to, to be assessed against it. But I, I think it's going to have to be, as I said, like a, as a model, it's going to have to do it. Um, the ones that are really keen will do it. Yeah. Um, but we're talking probably maybe half 
Ja, das ist süß. Wenn wir auch schon Bob nicht kurz. That was, uh, well, we... Serious working out. Yeah. Uh, for the year that ends this year that did it, it was... Two terms? A whole, a whole semester. So, yeah. Two, two terms? Four. Oh, it was, it was mixed with a little bit of hands on hunger and uh, something like that. So there's a lot of procedures of overlap with the Francisco course that looks like the 2.5. You mean how does the 2.5 assessment match? Um, well that's I guess what we need to have a look at. Um, the material that's covered in the Cisco, if I can find the yeah. review. <coughs> it's uh, the, the the this one here, Discovery 4, which is the first part of one of four for the discovery curriculum, um, I, I believe it goes beyond level two uh, because it's getting right into um, wider networks um, and uh, routing, and, and that I think is over and above what we're being asked to look at for level two. Um, but if we look back to what Murray had in his. IT Essentials, which is the Cisco Basic course, um, which is the one that uh, we'll be offering for our year 11 next year. Uh, level, uh, chapters 8 and 15 of that course, Murray um, thinks matches up to level 2. That's um, advanced networking. Uh, and, yeah, so, if I go back to that one. So that IT Essentials uh, So chapters 1 through 7 uh, That's a really small thing, you probably see it on your screen better 1 through 7, which is introduction to personal computer right through to fundamental printers and scanners uh, BM8 and 15 is fundamental networks and advanced networks. So they match up with level two from uh, the essentials course. And if I jump back to discovery one, um, see that so much. So maybe a third of Discovery 1 is level 2, and then the following two thirds would be possibly level 3 because it's all wide area network. So for us it's going to be a bit of a, a, a trial and see how it goes, um, considering it's going to be, as I said, students own uh, impetus that's going to be getting through, uh, through the course in their own time, um, just, just to see how, how many of you actually get complete, but um, it's, uh, we're, not, we're not offering the time in class for that. So that's why I think that the 2.5 is not going to be high on the list of uh, Potential assessments for our jobs because it's already been decided that it's not going to be have classroom time allocated to it. It's probably got no other, no other chance of getting, uh, getting support for us next year. Um, 
Yeah, what about your sort? Can you tell us about your <coughs> um, so a bit of background? I'm at Tagalog Community College. Um, it's my first year teaching, and I'm the only teacher there doing DT. <coughs> so it's kind of interesting. Um, and the last year, I bought 30 computers from Multimedia. They're an e-recycling company in Auckland, and I kind of got each computer for $10. I decided not to go with the CRT machines, but that was part of the package. Just purely because I don't have space to store 30 CRT screens. Um, in terms of storage, it probably takes up one desk worth of area, so you just stack them up high. And um, I had the kids play around with them, take them apart. For the assessment for 1.51, I basically just videoed the class assembling the computers. The next time they came into the room, I had done some things to the computer, so it doesn't work. Um, add cards. Um, tissue in, USB ports, disconnect that cable. Things stay down the line would be quicker, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just in another class you your That's right, yeah, yeah. Just in yeah, another class for later. Put a little class in. And then just put like a test virus on it and just tell them to fix it. And that was pretty much the assessment for 1.51. 1.50 didn't go that well. Um, it's a lot of theory, it's a lot of writing, and predominantly boys. They just hated it. Or even if they wanted to, they couldn't do it very well. Um, out of my class, I don't think any of them actually passed the assessment, unfortunately. But quite a few of them did pass the practical side of it. So that was quite fun for them. Uh, you just got to keep in mind, though, that there will be ongoing costs. Like at the end of this year, I've had 10 hard drives which are completely gone. Like the modern media? Well, I can't use them anymore. <laughs> For some reason or other. Well, I haven't spent a lot of time trying to fix it just yet. I mean, the senior sets us away, so I might have a look at them again. But you're getting blue screens when I'm trying to format or install XP on them. And looking at tools from higher end screen is not giving me any options either. Yeah. And looking at the 2.50, 2.51, my main concern is um, doing the 2.51 at this stage. Problem being is the school's computers are all ASUS triple E machines. They're very, very low power. Um, and with administrating the local area network, I can't give each student three computers to play with. And if it's the school computers, they won't have rights. If it's my computers, I don't have enough for them to do it on their own for an assessment. I can't virtualize it because both the computers are multimedia and the ones in the lab are just underpowered. My big thing for today was trying to get ideas of what other people are doing for 2.5. This was actually one of my big concerns. Um, we would have some old computers that we had, because obviously the kids can't plug into the school network. <coughs> They've got to be standalone machines. Yeah. And whilst getting switches and stuff to play with, uh, it's got to be totally self self contained in a situation that when you go to the room next time, you've got something they've already set up. You don't want to be setting up 20 machines every period. No. And most rooms don't have a spare hole down the back where you can have 20 machines set up. So I was thinking of working in groups to try and overcome that problem. Um, but even then, it's, it's not the ideal, you know what I mean? And how you stop them, once you teach them certain skills, the temptation is to go and have a go in the other room, isn't it? And see if you can get in that way. Now, in theory, the school system should allow them to do it. The reality is there'll be some smart aleck that will get in there somehow. So, um, for me, <coughs> the big thing was at Hagley is that we've got two hour blocks, so they do have time to set up and go through some stuff. Yeah. Um, so part, yeah. Also, the computers are all stored in the room next door. I think pretty much by halfway through, I could trust them and say, okay, you need to get your gear, here's the key. They just pop next door, grab the computers and the parts that they need mm -hmm. and set it up. They use the school monitors, so they just unplug the DJ cable plug in. Um, they plug in the school network cable in as well because they just run it as a work group rather than a domain if they're not part of the school domain but yet each of the computers could just talk to each other as long as they were submitted correctly. Mm -hmm. And uh, for one of the assessment, I just had a, one of those machines just set up as the server and says, hey, um, this guy's got this problem, he's got his work files on his home server, he needs to be able to get into it and open up the files, so they had to install it and set it just to unzip it, unwrite it really, and then open up with open office so they could access all his um, Excel files get to be able to stream media files, so I just had a couple of movie clips on there that they played and say what was in that movie clip. Uh, and also I ran NetMeeting on it, so they just had a video conference that one.
that's sort of a sort of barrier um, here as well as uh, for our um, hardware class. Last year we were in a large room which had room at the back for um, some extra tables where we could have um, there were ten pieces set up in addition to the classroom PCs. They were on their own network uh, and Cisco gear that we had in the same room, so it was all set up down the back. Mm -hmm. And that room was pretty much exclusively used by the senior students, so you know, kind of the line to be in there. Um, this year it's a bit different. Um, the computer's been stored in another room, so we need to do the hardware. We just need to block, take the kids in for two weeks to we a different classroom mm -hmm. um, and use the electronics to remove that. Um, but again, we have to set them up and partially pack away. Yeah. And that's a right pain. Um, yeah, that's right. We don't need to work very like this year. 45 minute periods. Just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm saying Tim is always in that. Mm -hmm. very yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they got very good at setting them up quickly and plugging the routers in and, and, and configuring it. Um, but it's that's been a real barrier uh, with the with the physical components. Um, the only other option is to try and do it some um, uh, virtual way. Set up and we run a um, uh, tool like what Cisco provide where you can build, store it up, build the PCs, get them the addresses and set up and run this plug them in and then what you do. But uh, that's presuming that you use the uh, Cisco tools uh, and you have to block it to become part of the academy to do that. It's fun for us, uh, see for a uh, for a run, I don't know, but uh, might be a bit of a barrier for other schools. Time frame for the next year. They, only go up. they are running uh, instructor courses in January for new instructors, but um, you've got to do the course, pass the test at 90%, and then go through all the paperwork to become part of the academy to use the materials. Um, there are, of course, heaps of other stuff that you can use. This one's good for you, so quite a bit. Shall I catch this? Obviously, everyone's got different ways of finding the resources. Is anyone else virtualized the machines? Yeah, we do. You do how you were using the virtuals? Yeah. My, my, the, um, the stuff I was at my um, start school, I'm not impressed by the idea of Mesa. Having this virtualizing a slave off for me, so I can use them this way. Right. Uh, very concerned about security, um, which is more a function, I think, of how the virtualization is going to work more than anything else. And I must say, I prefer to have physical stuff rather than the kids build up virtual. Because yeah. yeah. then they, they are actually plugging in, they can see the light flash, they know that's, that's connected. Yeah. Then they can ping that and find it works, you know what I mean? So they have physical as well as the um, visual paper thing. I mean, like, um, because I did my course at CPIT, which was MCSA. Yeah. And um, we basically just virtualize all the machines. Our final project involves seven virtual machines running in the VM where you can actually ping each other. I mean, Still, actually, you know, tell them and ping and yeah, 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 like, so yeah, yeah. that works quite well. Uh, <coughs> it'd be interesting to see how they set it up, but I don't have the budget to upgrade the computers. Yeah. Well, you know, we're in the same situation. We're going to have to crack, you know, mm -hmm. and try and make rubbish for the heat And that's going to be on their own battle because they're not being used to real computers for one bit of time. You're not going to get decent machines. So I think we will be limited to one switch, and three machines, or something, plus an LED switch. Mind if they can do that, you know, they're probably at the level 2 stand, 2 yeah. decimal, it's not hard, yeah. they're not just have to do it. Um, I, I think they've got to use the Tony Wide Network, it's going to do it. On a wireless network? Yeah. Any uh, local area network. Yeah. 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 yeah, so if you are able to do it. So, do they have to, for level 2, do they have to manage switches? Manage? They don't have to manage switches. So, unmanaged switches are just fine. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they have to be network administrators. Yeah. yeah. So, so they've basically got to. We need to study how to do that. Get away with that. I think they don't know the one. Then you switch this all the time. So it's not Yeah. So it, as long as I mean, as long as they can um, create the addressing scheme that's going to be used, I don't know. It's, um, I don't know. Why should I force it? We've been forcing like that. I think so. I think it's more about fault finding, isn't it? Can you set the thing up and then from your fault find why a machine won't talk to another machine sort of 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the biggies that took our school down for a while was one kid trying to switch into a switch. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I figured out what that was. Took it down for a long time. Well, like, yeah, how was. You never give the notice you're fixing that up. Mm. I am. You have to oh. do it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's me too. I see, right. <laughs> I think you put on to stop that. Um, I think you can turn on to stop that. Um, it comes in once you know it's right. easy. Before it happens, the news goes real slow until it's just a few years old. And I tried to isolate it. And all that stuff. I said, well, I realized that the whole thing was picked up. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. It does.
know that from Miracle for 2.50. Where's that? Sorry? Well, yeah. Uh, on use of IP addressing, including classes. And your configuration. Hold the roadmap if you're using that choice. Status dynamic, DHCP, and NAT. What are you doing in NAT? What are you doing in NAT? Um, well, for us, that's covered in Cisco, but they uh, are using the NAT we've done. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, they have a Linksys wireless router. Have you turned the extra? Is that all? I believe so, yeah. It's Which your game set up by default on the router. It's on the router, yeah, it's all right, done. Or is that more looking at, I know it mentions a home network up there, is that, say, mapping the www through to the port sure 18 or home something on the web server versus the well, I don't think it's even near that too. I don't think it's actually got anything to do with the service. You don't even have to run a server at home to do it. You know, so there's no reason to map. Well, maybe a remote access to one of those sort of things, Redfin or something like that. But the second best is that the uh, function of that purpose for a home network and the effect of the simple security of this network. So, this is the theory one, isn't it? Yes, it's a 2.50. So well, well, how would you argue that against that? Any of those for security? Yeah. I'm not sure how, how I'd explain that away. It's not really the purpose of nothing Well, it's not, not uh, just a bit, mm, no publicly addressable IP address, I guess. Would that be more IP address? I would say you're really using that so that you keep your own internal range of IP addresses confined within the network, isn't it? Yeah, but it is there anything further than that? Is that? That's not a security reason as such, is it? I suppose it does mean you don't use, you don't set up an internal address with a 203 range, do you? You know what I mean? No. Um, well, well, Yeah. But, that, but that's more not that's not that, that's recognition of an internal versus an external address range, isn't it? And the student having to realise or know the availability of, of the limited number of addresses available in each of the classes and knowing that they can't just allocate themselves a routable address that has to be a non-routable and it has to be it has to be that, doesn't it? Or well, we get network access if they want access through. To, to the internet. So the most common application that people have at home would be to set up four machines at home, so they all go through the one ADS or router, and that's the actual basic. So now he's going to be in there. Mm. Unless they go into the router itself and have a look, they won't appreciate what's going on. They so can see the configuration. So it's really a configuration of router we're talking here, isn't it? Yeah. And understand what NAS is rather than seeing the application of security. Because that's quite a, that's quite a Carry over into WAN, doesn't it? So, I mean, that's so the third boundary was the little three. That's, uh, that's my, part of my issue with okay, the level one is just device and peripherals, mm. level two is just local area network, or this plus local area network, and then level three is wide area network. But yet, there's, like, say, like a, a home wireless router, that's jumping into WAN territory, isn't it? How do you, how do you, you can go right there, there's a, it's A laptop server, a printer, a switch, and an ADSL motor. But the server's only a NAS box, isn't it? Yep. So you don't need 
did it. So I did it. Why did they sign that? So it's zero. They just signed other configurable devices up. That's what they signed. <coughs> I would say a more common one would be an ADSL router and a wireless router running separately. Mm -hmm. Or two wireless routers, for example, because often the homes will have that situation mm -hmm. now. That would be a more functional thing, in my opinion, if you're trying to set up or teach a kid how to set up. Mm -hmm. And shared printers, I suppose, network printers. It's the most resources. You'd have a good model for that. But when you have a look at the other things we're talking about, like desktop, PC, laptop, mobile devices, so there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, a switch for a router, modem, printer. You know, at Peter Score, they say connection technology will include, so at least you know you've got to include them. Yeah. You know, and wireless, you have to include wireless. Yeah, include wireless. But that word may is always the problem, isn't it? Yeah, that can be for supporting to the physical to the address. What are you other guys doing this area? Not much in this one, isn't it? What's that? Nothing yet, just planning. <laughs> for next year or for beyond? Hopefully next year. Right, yeah. right, because yeah. that's... Yeah. What I was hoping we'd be doing as well, but I think it's going to be a I gave my students for well, next year the option, I gave them a list of all the topics that we could look at, and uh, did we get enough kids to, to choose that to run with it, basically? There's a whole piece of room full of um, Cisco okay. routers okay. and wireless gear. Appendix four, four. Connection technologies will include, but are not limited to, common wired, optical, and wireless technologies. 
that will include optical. Let's see. Now, what do you use for an optical, or is that we're just saying that from from some some exchange? Is this a Bluetooth type connection? Is this a uh, type connection? Would that qualify? Yeah, that qualifies. That would probably work. Who uses Zima? The only optical you use is for the distance or between the exchange. You're not talking fiber. Do you, you, you mean fiber? Well, that's oh, yeah. it's probably oh. mean like fiber. Yeah. But that, that uh, makes sense for fiber in voice environments is, is what we covered for you today this year. Yeah, I think you use, there's some rules, game rules you play, isn't it? I can't say a network. Yeah. Between buildings you use fiber, you don't use copper. That's just a, simply uh, for a couple of good reasons. The primary one being the, the earth loop which does stuff that you have any problems with. But that's really the golden rule. And you can then get greater speed out of fiber too, once you can out of gigabit ethernet. But once you get past that, most homes are not going to be have fiber routers. And I'll see that last call won't give you fiber routers to play with. Even though I, even though I could get the fiber. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so what's your what's option two? Then you go to Fox, right? Fiber translators. Trans 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 but you know, no one's using them now because they're so low. No, that's right. You know, there's lots of those routes and you can plug it into your copper network. But you're setting up something else which is now you're teaching them all the technology mm. that is, is being phased out. So is this it's like teaching about floppy drive, you know. Is this assuming the connection from the exchange to the internet? No, because oh. that's not LAN. Yeah. That's a WAN in this one. What do they mean by five? Oh, yeah. It must be. The guy in five buildings. Five between the buildings. You're lucky five rounds, right? Where are you saying five? I think it's four. Of the of is that the oh. sample yeah. assessment? Yeah. Because um, I'm, I'm just looking at the actual standard itself, and it doesn't explicitly state fiber. Well, it, it does say there that it could, it may include, it doesn't say it has to include. Oh, does that? It does say wireless, wired, and or optical. And optical. Not being explicit. I'm not saying it's definitive. Yeah. It does say will include. Will include, but not will include. Maybe you should be asking a question about that. They have to set that up. Maybe you just say, under mm -hmm. what circumstances would you choose to use fiber versus use a wireless connection? One, because it's not work. Two, quickly. Mm -hmm. so it's I'm just getting a bit confused because I'm just looking at the achievement standard itself and it doesn't actually talk about fiber. Okay. So they've got so two point five two point five zero oh. and two point five one. Yeah. So actually this one is probably the sample assessment. Yeah, the sample assessment is probably just something that they've yeah. but the but the the yeah, the the resource yeah. doesn't say that they have to have that. Mm. Yeah, because they're uh, I haven't seen any any optical thing on their on their diagram. But again, it could just be an understanding of that this is how you can join networks together. You know, there's three methods you can do it, isn't it? It could be as simple as that. Uh, and you could include optical as simply being the infrared type printers still. Or you walk around with your phone and you, you, you know, update your contacts using that, using infrared, although most people wouldn't do that now, would they? Most, I'm not sure if your phones will have infrared on them, do they? Anymore. But then just the understanding of how it works is probably all the required there. Mm. That's probably enough. So here at school, we just say, well, okay, here with this school, okay, the local area network for the school consists of you know, this block and every other block in the school. And this one's going to that one, the yeah. fiber link. So right. here, fiber here. Here, here, here's the diagram. This yeah. is the switches. Yeah. That switch range is here, and that's got fiber cooked under there, and so the reason it's here. So enough just to cover mm. the distances mm. of, yeah. of this campus mm. requires the use of fiber. 
part of it. Um, so they know they know you know match that up the um, the requirements of um, limitations distance of copper and then they're away. Do you go into multi mode, single mode fiber? Oh well that because there's a the, which is, this just okay. shows uh, and they would show a little like, diagram to show but that's it just like where information it is yeah. like yeah. Okay. Print fiber and that's it. Um, but it's here, I don't need to go back to I don't need to go to speak to that. That's a very yes. reasonable thing to expect that they would put a student yes. to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. In yeah. that case, the multi mode single mode fiber could be yep. valid. I'll, I'll jump up and have a look and see what they come with. Or would that be more good than free? Well, I'll well, well, land. You know, that's the danger. You know. I'm, I'm, trying to go, I'm trying to go to depth here. You know, as to how. Well, I think we've got flexibility as a teacher to decide on that. Because I think, because this is a, an example of assessment. Here. This is just uh, this one says we can actually change this. We don't have to go into any type of fire. Um, you know, and instead we'll just hold that up on the wire and those get fire fences. Okay, so That's the that's what Cisco covers for fiber.
three seven six and five five. So there is a differentiation between CCNA or CCNP. So at the level that Cisco says, 
introduction to local area networks. Um, this is what they would say is adequate, but they're not insecure. Mm -hmm. Simple way more expensive to buy the water. So would that be a, a sufficient answer you'd expect a student to be able to say? Fibre optic would be a perfect choice. It's the main company you'd carry and you can light certain buildings, damaging network equipment. Fibre optic will not conduct the electricity. Is that an in-depth understanding or a comprehensive <coughs> understanding? Okay. And then the other thing is you can look at the whole thing from the security angle, you know. Mm. And it's fibre optic is far harder to break into. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a copper, so that's the same angle again, you know. So really just someone's going to sit there and pick up the signal yeah, and duck from the phone yeah. through the copper. And given the choice, why wouldn't you want to use copper between the two? That's like some magic good time. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, five, 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 That's so yeah, it, it'll, well, you'd know for your own students, wouldn't you? I mean, holistically, whether they were achieved or excellent, maybe. I find it hard to know where the, where the merit was. Well, I always struggle with who's got an in depth and who's got an uh, um, mm. extensive. As I said to that one, to one of the head for level one before, um, I Murray went back and uh, went back to unit standards. Uh, he had lots of trouble with the literacy requirements for the 1.5 and 1.51. So we went back to unit standards. And um, he was one of the last champions. What type of kids are you getting into the infrastructure course? Are you getting kids that are interested in computing who are able, or are you getting kids that want to do something practical? Did you see the 
3D printer. Yeah. Three of those four guys were in the uh, hardware class this year. So, so you were attacking quite a, a, a... Well, there, there, were, there were two camps. There were um, the kids that were really strong in maths and physics, electronics, and love that yep. stuff. And yep. that's like half my class yep. did very well. The other half were the ones that took it because they thought it was going to be a cruise subject. And the ones that hit bomb spectacularly. So out of, what, 16, 16 students this year doing just that infrastructure course, under infrastructure, for um, six, six past half a course or more. And a lot of them spent more time working on that than they did uh, working in the But yeah, it's, uh, it was the, the, for, for me, uh, just the, again, the literacy requirements. They, they couldn't write the reports that were needed. Couldn't write them to a level where they could get the standard. Um, so that's why I'm looking at other, other assessment methods. We're trying to find other assessment methods. You know, the idea of, of videoing. Um, I like that idea. It's just it's, you know, spectacularly good. Um, and it just saves so much uh, you know, verbal uh, resubmits and verbals and clarifications at the end, which just takes forever. And, yeah, it's time, isn't it? Oh, no. so well, we allow cell phones uh, with cameras specifically in the same period because I want to get to take photos all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which you know, what you need if you've you got your own PC, otherwise you just screen capturing software and, and bang, what do you know? But, um, um, and you've got a machine for that, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're doing a lot of the electronics and so doing microprocessors. So sure, yeah. yeah. Um, we've got at school uh, class sets of um, iPods, which they're using the same thing in other areas. We can't get the lab, up the labs, because they're just so uh, so difficult. Um, got. Um, and the same reason in science, that we're using them for their you know, accelerometer testing and stuff, the video and stuff. Um, that seems to be working out all right. Um, yeah, more of the kids' own devices. So everybody has a, like I say, camera. Screenshot, put some arrows on it, and yeah, yeah, write a few yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what you need. Get some labels to show that they know what they're doing. I found that I lot my kids to have their cell phones for use of camera. They just end up texting. Texting all the time. Yeah. Um, so I just said no cell phones at all, and because I have a teacher in my classroom, because of three deaf students, she and I both just had a camera, mm -hmm. and whenever they need a picture, they put their hand up. But once they get the machines going, then it's all the screenshots. How, how do you teach so many masks? What, what, what structure do you use to teach them? To teach, yeah. teach so many masks? Yeah. How do you, what, do you, what do you say to the kids that use them and how do you differentiate them? Um, Anyone wants to sort of you? Yeah. Well, just start with the classes and, and, and with the default masking and, and, and go from there, I, I guess. It's one way of keeping parts of the network separate. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want the students to get into the stuff, so you don't want to be messing around with different architecture and having different physical sets. You don't want to have to rewire every time you want to plug in a device. So So you use something must to differentiate for the student who wasn't starting with it? Well, I could. I don't. I don't know. I could. I mean, they need to know, uh, they need to know the level two assessment, the um, rationale for, for A, B, and C classes. Yeah. As soon as you get to that, well, then they have to know about the you know, host and uh, network and, and host components, and then they have to know the subnet class that, that reflects that, and then which one, which was the default for each of those classes. So as soon as they've got that sorted out, so that's teaching you this is purely as, as, a, as a part of the class. Yeah, yeah, that, well, that's, that's, the, that's the first time they see it. Mm. So, but you know, as to do the then going through the 
start medical, the, the, I know in the Cisco course that it gets them to do, they have to actually go and do the sudden yeah, um, their right. own um, Class B network yeah. Yeah. And, and set up the correct sudden event to allow for um, four sudden events within that their own 192 network. Yeah. So it, it, it leads them through what they have to do. Um, and, and then so this will get beyond what they need for level two, aren't we? Because um, we then have to identify the broadcast and the network numbering for each of the subnets, so they have to be able to know that much as well. So that's been a full on. But that's that's part of uh, part of an extensive knowledge of. Uh, yeah. well, it's quite a heavy level one for level two. Mm. I'm, I'm putting on the students I would expect to pick up those class. I'd be like you, I think, I'd have. Some kids are in it because they're bloody computer right into this. Mm -hmm. And there'd be, I think, one third, two thirds really right there. And I'd be working really hard to convince the other two thirds of the class and they even know that they have to play out spell something. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I don't want to cheat on the course. Yeah. <laughs> but I do want to make sure that yeah. all the time it seems to happen to have any done here. So maybe you're going to teach them a little bit of cheating here? Say some beyond the the numbers you put in there. Yeah, well, perhaps for the chief, they need to know that there was a German address that's an A, B, or C because they know the, the ranges. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's an understanding of the classes. Uh, if they can, uh, if they can explain how they would subject and the reasons for it, perhaps that's in depth, and if they can do it and identify the broadcast addresses for each of the subjects, then that may be an excellent step. And maybe you don't have you don't have to stand here and spout that all to them. So right, here's what we're covering in terms of subjects, we want to make sure into subjects now. Um, when you find out that you know there's a situation that you need something else, you go and find it. And, and once and again, we'll go and work out exactly what they I said, okay, tell me this in days. I can, I can, tell me. The excellent students will, will find it by themselves. I guess John said this morning, you can't expect to stand up front and disseminate every bit of information mm -hmm. that is needed oh, yeah. for all your students to get to excellence level uh, across the whole subject that you're teaching. Just, you just can't. There's no time to do that. Um, they'll need to go and find what they need themselves and find it other bits in their own time, if they can, they'll find their own path uh, of excellence in any given area, whatever their interest, wherever their interest lies. Mm -hmm. so I'll see if I get there. the other part should be Oh, the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're five minutes over. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Very, very interesting. I, was, I still struggle. I mean, it, it, on Wednesday, we came around and we said well, we're not going to do 2.50 and 2.50. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what the picture is for us. I'm going to ask some infrastructure inside. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank